Today we have a crazy nuclear revenge story involving a stepdad. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, how I ruined a school prefect's big day. Being in high school is quite the experience. Being in an all-boys high school takes the experience to a whole new level. But being in an all-boys boarding school? Now that is real hardcore stuff right there. As someone who never really had any form of independence beforehand, being dropped off at a boarding school was one of the scariest moments of my entire life. I was in a different high school entirely when my dad decided I had to man up. So he made me write various entrance exams into some of the most prestigious boarding schools he could think about. Being the smarty pants that I was, I proceeded to pass every single one with flying colors. Hindsight is great, but I wasn't used to failing at this point. Once all the results were out, the decision of what school I was going to transfer to was left to me. And I wasn't exactly good at making my own choices. I either had to choose between staying in the state we lived in or going on an academic adventure to another state hundreds of miles away. The decision was quite easy for me though, as I had schoolmates whose parents I think felt the same way my dad did. Apparently we were all getting too pampered. So when a couple of my friends decided to stay in the state, my choice was very clear because that way I didn't have to start from scratch when adapting to the new school, or so I thought. Summer was over and it was time for me to prepare my mind for my first experience of living away from my family. I was filled with mixed emotions. A part of me was happy that I get to leave some of mom's nagging behind, and also the chores, especially the chores, and another part was scared of the new systems of conformity I would have to face while also having to adapt to all the new faces. I heard stories about this particular boarding school long before my dad decided to make me into a man. I heard about the history, the traditions, and the tales. It was quite popular, being one of the oldest schools in the country, so a lot of the stories got around, even if many of them were made up. I thought these stories would have me prepared for most of what I would face, but on getting to the main gate of the school, I realized that maybe the most important parts of the stories had been left out. I had never seen so many students stand by a school gate on a Sunday before, and they all looked much older than I expected, so I was most definitely intimidated even without having a word said to me. There was a registration process at the gate, which I did with the help of my dad, and under the watchful gazes of people, I assumed were my seniors. The process was quite seamless as it seemed for 30 minutes. My dad was no longer interested in me being a man and just wanted it over with ASAP, so he used his influence. Now it was time for me to say my goodbyes, but not before I had my first true boarding school experience. After helping me with registration, dad looked to be in a hurry, so he told me to take my things to the hall room allocated to me and come down so he can bless me in a way only a father can. I took my bags up with a smile and some sense of urgency, but I had trouble locating my room, so I asked one of the first students I saw to show me the way to the room I described and quickly realized this was a wrong choice. Unbeknownst to me, this student was actually one of the prefects. Basically, students appointed by the school authorities to be able to lord over other students in their field of specification. At first, he acted all nice and helpful even carrying my bags for me and asking me to follow him to the room I was allocated to. I obviously agreed to follow him. He was the first person lending me a hand in boarding school. This was a historical moment that I was going to tell my kids. At least, that's what I was thinking at the time. Getting to the room, I saw everyone dressed in red check-colored shirts. Mind you, I wore a blue check-colored shirt, so something seemed off. This was definitely not my room. Had I been duped? So many questions were going through my mind at that time, but I didn't come from strife. So I reacted like a jolly good fellow and asked, why is everyone wearing a different color? And got no response. That was when my instincts belatedly kicked in, and I began to sweat a bit as I remembered some of the stories I'd heard and began to put two and two together. At this point, I'd figured out they were all in the class ahead of me and that this was their territory. But the prefect was already with my bags, so I couldn't just run off and decided to stay calm. The first thing he said to me after dropping my bags by one of the bunk beds in the room was, Make yourself comfortable. You mean there was nothing to fear, I thought to myself? But as I was made to sit on one of the beds close to me, I felt a heavy slap on the back of my neck. 
Dazed and confused, I began to look around to see that I'd been surrounded by the seniors. At this moment, I was wondering what I'd done wrong and nothing came to mind, so I made hand signs as if to say, look guys, there must have been a misunderstanding here. Then the prefect came over to me, crouched and asked if I knew what my offense was. I said I didn't, and he then asked me to squat. What was going on? Was this a dream? The shock was so overwhelming that, almost as if by reflexes, I began to squat before any further questions. He then explained to me that I'd just sent a prefect on an errand, and that was a taboo according to their traditions. I wish I'd learnt that too. He also reported to the rest of the room who then took turns trying to add variations to the punishment to test my balance and endurance. After a few minutes of some military grade exercises, he told me some of the rules I had to follow to avoid a similar situation in the future and even accompanied me to go meet my dad who had been surprisingly patiently waiting for me to come receive my blessings. My dad didn't even realize how sweaty I was from all the punishment. I guess he just wanted to give his blessings and leave at that point, which was what he did, and so my boarding school journey had now officially started. With a lot of seniors roaming around looking for juniors to prey on once parents had left, most of my peers looked to some seniors and prefects for protection, especially during the brutal first week which they called the initiation week by tradition. I didn't know any seniors, I barely even knew my peers so I sought the one student who had already given me some survival advice, the prefect from earlier. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I managed to find him, although this wasn't before some narrow escapes experienced with some seniors, and when I did find him, the first thing he did was give me his cup and cutlery to wash. Day one, and I'd already become a dishwasher. He also made me carry his school bag along with mine and follow him around. Now, I had no inherent issue doing these tasks at first as long as it guaranteed my safety from other seniors and prefects, but this turned out to not be the case. Just like a lucrative bubble, all his friends wanted in and within a few hours of resuming, I had begun to wash the utensils of at least four of his friends. This was not how I planned for my first couple of days in boarding school to go, but this was nothing compared to what I was about to face in the coming days. The first day of classes finally came, and I was excited to see my new learning environment. There were programs the school ran in the first week to acclimate new students such as myself, so I used them to get familiar with some of my new mates and make new friends. One of the new friends I made was someone I'd recognized while on bag carrying duties. Apparently he was a fellow slave to the prefect and his gang. After speaking to him and a few others, I realized that this slavery was commonplace which kind of made me feel better and after some more slave to slave conversations, I had successfully created a little friend group, good times. But over here, good times never really lasted long and by the time the closing bell was rung, it was time to run to the dining hall for lunch. Lunch in a regular boarding school was always a task but in this school, it was more daunting than usual. You had seniors and prefects hovering around tables like vultures looking for juniors to flex their powers on. I and my new friends decided to join the same table since we had so much in common, and this decision would come to haunt us as a few minutes after settling down, there came our oppressors, strolling into the dining hall, apparently looking for juniors to do their bidding. Quickly realizing what may befall us, we try to hide our faces, but we were too late. He had already recognized his two favorite juniors and slowly walked towards our table. After asking a few irrelevant questions about our day, he asked us to wait for him outside once lunchtime was over. We contemplated escaping, but the school campus was relatively small and as a prefect, he had powers to step into any class and find us. So we didn't take chances and decided to wait. What's the worst that could happen after all? So we waited for a few minutes before we saw the prefect come with his gang. Not them again. They were all holding school uniforms and housewares we supposed belonged to them, as well as a few buckets. It didn't take us long to realize what was about to happen, but we stayed calm and waited for the prefect's instructions, and without any remorse, he confirmed our fears. We had to do the laundry for him and his gang. Over 10 pairs of uniforms. I instantly lost all of my timidity and loudly refused. Everyone, including my new friend, was shocked at the audacity I had. 
and before I could say anything else, there was a rain of slaps and blows coming from the seniors who felt disrespected. I didn't mind because I thought it was going to get me out of having to do their laundry, but as many times already in my short time in boarding school, I was wrong once again. The infuriated prefect swiftly asked me to do a plank and called the attention of the two other higher ranked prefects. This was where I realized I'd screwed up. Once they got there, the first thing they did was to discharge my friend who was already holding a bucket full of clothes. What a lucky guy. Next thing they did was to instruct me to wash every single uniform there by myself. The prefect let out a smirk as if to say he was satisfied with the outcome, while a few of the seniors withdrew their uniforms to find other juniors to turn to slaves, as they figured the burden would affect the quality of the job. At the end, I was left with five pairs, three belonging to the prefect, and one each belonging to two of his buddies. So I got up, obviously still fuming, dusted myself and left with the clothes along with the buckets, fully plotting my revenge for the humiliation I had just received. After thinking for some time, my friend who had been discharged earlier caught up with me and gave me an idea. He had been to the boarding school before, so he had similar experiences, so he knew how to get back at bullies. So we hatched a plan to take advantage of being in possession of the uniforms of our chief oppressor. We decided to ruin all of the uniforms that belonged to him. He had signs to denote which ones were his. So we made a large mixture of bleach and laundry blue and put all of his uniforms in, including his red checkered housewear. Our evil plan worked. The whites were now bluish in color and stained, while the housewares also turned bluish with spots of discoloration. Even the navy blue trousers were not spared. We decided to wash the pairs belonging to the other seniors in the correct way, so as to not elicit too many reactions, or so we thought at the time. The deed was done. It was time to get some sleep before the big reveal. As I laid in my bunk bed, I began to wonder about the potential magnitude of what I'd just done, and some fear began to creep in. I tried to use the spirit of vengeance to fight the fear, but I ended up barely sleeping because I felt that at any moment, I could be on the receiving end of another blow. Morning came and it was time for me to hand the uniforms and buckets over. I went alone, but my friend followed from a distance. On getting there, the prefect already seemed to suspect foul play. I wondered if someone had told him what we did, but I stayed silent, so he just took the bucket from me and went into his corner. There was silence for some seconds before I heard a loud scream. Everyone's attention was drawn. Crap, I thought to myself. I didn't bargain for all that attention. I then overheard someone say, That boy is screwed up big time. Today is the prefect's presentation. At this point I realized how big my screw up was, but continued on what to do next until one of the seniors in the room silently gave me a sign to run away as fast as I could, bless his soul. As soon as I saw this sign, I took to my heels and ran as fast as I could to where my friend was observing from, and we both found our way back to my hostel. It was Prefect's presentation day, the day prefects are officially introduced to the new students on the assembly ground and because of the condition of his uniforms, he was unable to join in the presentation and was merely announced. I had successfully ruined his big day, and all the fear I felt had turned into satisfaction. He finally found me in my class, and I had to suffer some punishment from a group of prefects. But I'd already ruined his big day, and boy was I glad I did it. It was a small price to pay to free myself from his shackles for good. Now, did OP really free themselves from the shackles of this guy, or did they just get some small revenge? I mean, it sounds to me like they were still very shackled. I guess the only consolation is maybe people know that if they try to mess with OP or expect them to do chores, they might intentionally tank it or ruin things. Maybe they think it's not worth it? I don't know. Otherwise, OP's just getting beat up. That said, our next story is, I reported my stepdad and got him fired. I still smile when I remember how far my high school boyfriend and I went in getting my revenge on my stepdad. While I do feel what we did was extreme, I feel justified in what I did. Not just because he was a jerk, but also because he had it coming. The only reason we were able to hurt him that badly was because he did something bad in the first place. It wasn't like we made up anything, we just exposed him for all to see. 
My stepdad is the typical narcissist that loves to maintain a good reputation outside of their families, so that when those who are close to them tell everyone about the evil that they do, nobody would believe them. Outside the home, my stepdad was a noble, respectful, principled, and kind man who loved children and teenagers and knew just how to get through to them. But within the walls of the house he shared with my mom, he was a beast. My stepdad was an extremely selfish man. He believed the world should revolve around him and that his word was law. The first evil thing he did to me and my sister, who's nearly two years older than me, was to make our mom leave us. Our parents were never married, they never even had a relationship, but somehow mom had a baby with my dad. And less than two years after she had my sister, she had me too. People judged my mom for what they believed was a poor choice. She had a baby twice by a man she wasn't married to and wasn't even dating. While all this was happening, my dad had an on and off girlfriend that he truly loved. As everyone predicted, my dad left my mom to be with his girlfriend and they eventually got married. My mom had hoped and wished that having kids by my dad would make him stay. She loved my dad very much, but he never quite loved her as much as she wanted. After my dad got married to the love of his life, my mom became more accepting of the fact that the man she loved did not love her too, and probably never did or will. She moved on and they co-parented nicely together. My sister and I lived with my mom and our dad, and his wife lived four streets away from us. The problem started when my mom started dating a school teacher. I hated him from the minute I saw him and so did my sister. The first time he met us, he was mad because my mom introduced us to him by his name instead of his last name and title. My mom thought it was absurd that we would refer to him formally, especially since he wanted a long-term relationship with her and we were her children. They argued and even though he didn't yell at her, the way he spoke to her was wrong. He was so condescending and he complied that she was raising spoiled children. My mom was visibly mad about his comment about her not knowing how to raise her kids, but she did try to suppress her anger and made a small joke about the whole situation. I got to understand later that people had assured my mom that my dad could never be with her because she was a loudmouth and was constantly angry and had a permanent scowl on her face. The people was mostly her own mother. I still cannot understand why, but my maternal grandmother hated my mom. She said too many vile things to her and kept it going until my mom completely cut her off. My mom decided when she met her husband that it was best to keep quiet and be pleasant to make him stay with her. My mom wanted nothing more than to be married. As kids during prayers, my mom would go on and on asking God to send her a man and take away her shame. That evening was the beginning of silence and pretense in the relationship my stepdad had with my mom. He constantly tried to change everything we had going on in our home. Before my mom met him, she was quite nonchalant, hardly ever bothered about a lot of things, and she let us do whatever we wanted to do. My sister was a bookworm growing up, so my mom got her books. I, on the other hand, just wanted to read fashion magazines and watch modeling shows on TV. My mom let me do that too. She never tried to tell us what to do or force any kind of interest on us. When she and my stepdad started a serious relationship, he made my mom stop me from reading fashion magazines and watching TV shows. She's not going to learn anything from watching all these shows and reading these junks. He told my mom so many times that I started to notice that my fashion magazines were disappearing and my mom started to change the channel whenever I was watching a fashion program on TV. She would buy me books whenever she was buying for my sister, even though I had no interest in reading them. At some point, he complained about the kind of books that my sister read, and my mom changed that too. He was just too controlling, and we hated him, but we couldn't do anything about it. My mom loved and would do nearly anything to keep him long enough for him to marry her and prove to the world that she could indeed keep a man. Two years after their relationship started, my mom finally got her boyfriend to propose to her. They had a nice engagement party, and his friends and colleagues from the private school he taught in were all present. After their party, my mom and her boyfriend had a huge fight. My mom wanted to take us along with her when she moved in after their marriage, but my stepdad refused. He said he wasn't comfortable having us under his roof while our father was still alive and very much in our lives. They kept fighting over it over and over again. 
Then one day he came to our house and asked for his ring back. My mom was so upset, she broke down in tears. I'm sorry, I just want to feel like my woman is loyal to me. You not wanting to let these kids go off to their dads shows that you're not ready to start something new with me. My mom kept crying, trying to convince him, through her tears, that she wanted nothing to do with our dad and only wanted to keep her kids with her. He walked out on her with his ring. My mom had this friend at the time and she came over to console her and all of that. Do you think that he's right? My mom asked your friend. What? No he's not. That's a controlling jerk right there. Children thrive better when they're with their mothers. You keep your children and let him go. My mom seemed convinced, but soon after she told us she was going to have us live with our dad. My sister didn't want to hear it. She cried and threw a huge tantrum that my mom sent her to her room and grounded her. In the end, my mom had made her decision. She was going to move in with her husband and without us. After the wedding, my sister and I went to live with my dad and his wife. Ordinarily, my sister and I liked my dad's wife. We liked her when we would visit him on weekends and she would sometimes even drop us back home with our mom on Sunday evenings. But living with her permanently just was not the same as visiting her on weekends. Her patience for us grew thinner. She got tired of my sister's tantrums and whinings. When we first moved there, if my sister was throwing a tantrum over an issue like the food she didn't like, my stepmother would try to calm her down and offer her a snack or offer to prepare another meal. As time passed though, my stepmother would simply get up from the table and go into their bedroom, completely ignoring my sister. As an adult now, I understand why the situation was so frustrating for her and why she chose to shut everyone out, but as a child, I hated her for not paying attention to my sister and for leaving my dad to deal with the situation alone. I blamed my stepdad for everything, and I looked forward to hurting him. It hurt me even more because my stepdad had a son before he married my mom, and he brought his son home to be raised by my mom. Whenever we visited my mom, his son, who was just slightly older than my sister and I, would talk in whispers, because my stepdad hated noise from kids. The house was always clean because he could not stand to see anywhere looking less than pristine. My stepbrother would tell me about how his dad yelled at my mom and orders her around. Everyone walked on eggshells around him, and while he pretended a bit whenever my sister and I were around, he still yelled and slammed doors or punched his fists into a wall. One afternoon, while my sister and I were in their house, I saw him shove my mom aside while she was talking to him about something. He shoved her so violently that I was shocked and couldn't say anything for the rest of that day. I told my dad ever since that I didn't want to visit my mother ever again. And he agreed with me, even though I never told him why. Fast forward to five years later, my stepdad was still an abusive jerk and the principal of the private school he taught in. His abusive behavior had gotten so bad that my mother looked twice her age. His son ran away and cut him off, and my half-siblings, he had two boys with my mom, walked on eggshells everywhere. They were not happy children at all. At the time, my boyfriend attended the school my stepdad taught and would tell me about the things my stepdad did in school, things that only a very few population of the school knew about. The school was a private school owned by a popular church. The rules were quite strict, and they took discipline very seriously. For instance, using drugs within the school premises or at any school-related activity, such as excursions, was highly prohibited. Students caught using or selling drugs were immediately expelled from the school, and the school would outrightly refuse to issue a transfer letter for the said student. Many of the parents who took their kids there were rich religious people so their children knew better than to do anything that would make their parents be invited. However, kids were still secretly using drugs and even selling on the school premises. The interesting part was that my stepdad, the principal, knew about this. But rather than mete out the prescribed punishment in the school's code of conduct, he would offer to pretend as if nothing happened in exchange for some money. That's right, my stepdad was taking bribes from his students in exchange for his silence. As a result, many students were using and some others were selling and getting away with it because the principal did nothing and would even cover up for them. When my boyfriend told me about this, I knew that the time had finally come to get my revenge. But I couldn't do it alone, so I told my boyfriend about my plans to expose him. My boyfriend was very religious, so I tried not to make it look like I was just trying to get revenge, 
even though that was what I was trying to do. I made a whole speech about how what my stepdad was doing could potentially ruin the lives of numerous students and all of that. He agreed but said we were going to need proof. The school board wouldn't take any action against him without getting proof first. They believed whatever my stepdad told them and trusted him, especially since he had a way of making the students behave. They also wouldn't want to upset parents and have them lose trust in the principal for no reason. My boyfriend and I decided to get proof together, but there was simply no way to do it. I finally found a solution when one afternoon, my mother, sister, half-brothers, and I were having lunch together. A woman came over to our table with her young son and said hello to my mom. My mom replied cheerfully, but when she left, my mom rolled her eyes and told us that the woman is the school's counselor and that she hated my stepdad and was very upset when he was selected to be the new principal. Maybe she wanted to be the principal, I said, thinking about how fortunate I was to finally see someone else who'd like to see my stepdad fail. I made my boyfriend go to her and confess all he knew about the principal and his aiding and abetting. Some months later, the counselor alerted the school board and they carried out their investigation and found my stepdad guilty of the allegations laid against him. He was immediately fired and arrested. I had just thought that he'd be fired and everyone would see him in the filthy light that I saw him, but it was way bigger than that. My stepdad was facing the possibility of jail time. I started to panic and feel guilty, but my boyfriend calmed me down. He's only suffering from the consequences of his actions. He was going to get caught anyway. We just sped up the process, my boyfriend would assure me. When a reporter wrote in the local papers about what my stepdad was doing, I finally understood the gravity of his offense. He was lucky to get a very short offense though, but I stopped feeling bad for him after reading that article. I smiled just thinking about what my boyfriend and I did. The only regret I have is not informing my mom ahead, even though she would have prevented me from doing anything about it, but the whole issue affected her badly at first. It wasn't until my stepdad went off to jail that my mom and half-brothers started to loosen up and feel free again. My mom was looking as beautiful as I remembered her to be. That ruled out any regrets I had about getting my stepdad in trouble. Let it be said, OP obviously did the right thing here. I mean, when you think about the lives the stepdad was affecting and allowing all of this illicit activity to go on in school, it's for the best that they're held accountable for those actions and locked up. Because God forbid any of these kids get in with a bad crowd and get their lives ruined. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.